for joining us for our uh, daily scripture reflection on the lectionary. Um, hope you're well. It's uh, Monday the 11th of May, Monday in the fifth week of Easter Tide. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, the gifts of your Holy Spirit are what we hear of in these days, the effects and the power of the witness of the disciples. So give us the same spirit that we may be equally powerful in our witness to your resurrection, to new life and to the new hope we can bring to those who are in need. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're reading, as you know, Acts of the Apostles and uh, we've got to the, the fifth week of Easter tide. So we've been hearing about the mixed fortunes of Paul and Barnabas in the preaching of the good news, how it's welcomed and how it's rejected. So you can you can recognise the pattern of the following of Jesus, his message welcomed by some, rejected by others. It's the same message, there are two people crucified with, with Jesus. Uh, one uh, is open uh, to what the Lord has to say, the other isn't. So it's, it's really uh, about people's freedom and choice. So uh, we are freely choosing to be those who hear and heed the good news and also freely choosing to be as members of the family of God through baptism and those who seek to make it known. So from the Acts of the Apostles. With the connivance of the authorities, a move was made by pagans as well as Jews to make attacks on Paul and Barnabas and to stone them. When the apostles came to hear of this, they went off for safety to Lyconia, where, in the towns of Lystra and Derby, and in the surrounding country, they preached the good news. A man sat there who had never walked in his life, because his feet were crippled from birth. And as he listened to Paul preaching, he managed to catch his eye. Seeing that the man had faith to be cured, Paul said in a loud voice, Get to your feet, stand up. And the crippled man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the language of Lyconia, These people are gods who have come down to us disguised as men. They addressed Barnabas and Zeus, and since Paul was the principal speaker, they called him Hermes. The priests of Zeus outside the gates, proposing that the people should offer sacrifice to them, brought garlanded oxen to the gates. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard what was happening, they tore their clothes and they rushed into the crowd shouting, Friends, what do you think you're doing? We are only human beings like you. We have come with good news to make you turn from these empty idols to serve the living God, he who made heaven and earth, the sea and all these hold. In the past he allowed each nation to go its own way, but even then he did not leave you without evidence of himself and the good things he does for you. He sends you rain from heaven, he makes your crops grow when they should, and gives you food to make you happy. Even this speech, however, is scarcely enough to stop the crowd offering the sacrifice. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. So, You won't be surprised that Paul cures a cripple towards the beginning of the ministry that we have taught about in Acts of the Apostles, because that's what Peter did, and Peter did it because that's what Jesus did. So we have uh, the opportunity to avert to this continuity previously, so here it is again. Quite a straight line between the characters involved, showing the discipleship following in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus. Now, remember, that will be both in the powerful deeds that they do, the powerful words that they share, signs and wonders that cause them, but it will also be in the rejection that they experience and persecution. So they say and do what Jesus said and did, and they have said about them and done to them what was said about and done to Jesus. So there is, there is discipleship in a nutshell, the rough and the smooth, the pleasant and the less pleasant, the easy and the difficult. So, from the
follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Peter did earlier, Paul does now, cures the crippled man. And whereas the Jews who witnessed Peter's cure and Jesus' cure, very strongly monotheistic, um, were puzzled perhaps as to where the power came from. Of course, Jesus talks about the Father's power, and Peter talks about the power of the Lord Jesus uh, uh, risen from the dead. Uh, we're not given Paul's uh, rationale behind it, other than that he sees the man as faith to be pure. So um, that's part of the equation, it looks like, but to trust that, that good can come, uh, that even in a situation as desperate as that, man is never locked. Um, uh, Paul's going to do something very powerful. And the reaction of the people? Well, they're into their gods for various uh, uh, occasions and days and, and, and needs. So uh, a wonderful thing has happened. This is somehow miraculous. Uh, and because the, of their the background and their the knowledge of the, of the Greek myths, um, we brought them down as, as Zeus and, and Hermes. And of course, cue the priests of the, of the temple um, of Zeus outside the gate, say, oh, this is what we've been waiting for. And they bring uh, these gallon deduction. So it's a wonderful image. Uh, that uh, they're going to offer sacrifice with these god-like uh, creatures who who are um, who are in the midst, and then Paul and Barnabas, of course, are appalled because of, from the Jewish background they're monotheistic and they're also preaching Jesus. Uh, they have no trouble with these uh, idolatrous practices at all to be mistaken for gods themselves. It's, they're utterly appalling as far as they were concerned. So they rush into the crowd and stop them, um, and then. Paul gives a wee speech. Now, you will remember last week when he spoke at the at the synagogue in Antioch, he spoke to Jews. So what did he do? He ran through Jewish salvation history. He doesn't mention any of that to these people of Lanconia. They don't have the same background. They are real pagans um, in, in, the, in the technical sense of the word. So what does he do? It appeals to their, appeals to their understanding of the natural world. He says, look, um, in the past God, you know, he let you do what you want, but he expects better of you now. Now he sent Jesus up to reveal them. But also, look around about you, there are all kinds of signs of the power and presence of God. And he uses uh, just a very simple image, doesn't he? Um, look at the things he does. He sends you rain from heaven, a blessing in that part of the world. Not, not always a blessing for us, but because it doesn't rain so much. Uh, uh, rain is always a blessing from God in that part of the world. He makes your crops to grow when they should and gives you food to make you happy. So it's a fairly simple message. Uh, but uh, you know, we're going to expand on this. It's just lovely the way the audience can be determinative of the content of the preaching of the good news because, let's face it, if I'm talking to a group of people and I'm not using the language they understand, I'm not going to really communicate anything certainly not anything as significant as the revelation of God made man in Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, which is what the apostles are about. Um, this is a precursor, and we'll hear it, um, a precursor to what happens later in Acts, where Paul goes to the Areopagus in Athens, the marketplace, and he preaches there, and he uses Greek philosophy to appeal to those who are Greek philosophers, but the Areopagus is meeting place, a marketplace, but also a place for philosophical discourse and debate. Um, and, and he uses that opportunity and, and he speaks in their language about the wonders of God made known in Jesus Christ. So, perhaps for us a reflection, uh, if I'm witnessing to the good news, uh, how effectively do I use the language of my hearers? That can be challenging because we might feel that uh, they don't have a religious language. Uh, and we are communicating in a way that is not really a communication. So it may take an effort for us to move from our categories and our language to categories and language that other people understand and use when we're witnessing to our faith and the risen Lord Jesus. So that the Lord might guide us and strengthen us in that uh, endeavour. We pray for ourselves and for each other. And let's end with our prayer to see God. O blessed St. Rock, patron of plague victims, have pity on those who lie upon a bed of suffering. Your power was so great when you were in this world that by the sign of the cross many were healed of their diseases. 
Now that you are in heaven, your power is not less. Offer then to God our hopes and prayers, and obtain for us the help that we seek. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So God, pray for us that we may be preserved from all diseases of body and of soul. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So, uh, another week, uh, and uh, it's going to be uh, a long haul. So, we pray for one another, for strength, for courage, for perseverance. Uh, we pray for those who are, who are sick and for those who care for them. And of course, we pray for our families, our friends, our relatives, friends, neighbours, those who are in the Hope to stay safe and well. I hope you have a good day.